Hi, welcome back to Genesis Custom Savers, and today I'm going to show you how to wire up a multi die LED. Something like this lead engine, RGGB LED, or uh, perhaps a Tri Rebel or a Tri Cree, which are becoming very common for use in lightsabers with flash on clash. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to wire one in parallel, and I'm going to show you how to wire one in series and explain the difference between the two. So, for today, you're going to need, of course, the LED. You're going to need a really good soldering iron. In some cases, uh, a soldering iron that you can get really hot, an ESD-safe soldering iron. Um, you're going to need a little clamp for your LED, some helping hands. These things are the best. Of course, your solder, your snips. In case you made a mistake, you're going to need some wire braid, uh, which we're going to use to show you how to, uh, how to fix mistakes with soldering and small components like this. You're also going to need to, uh, to find and download and print off the specifications for the LED that you're using, whether that's a tri cree or, a, in this case, a, a lead engine, just so you know that the, uh, the different uh, capacities and maximum settings for the LEDs so that you can set your sound card, your petite crouton, or your crystal focus, particularly uh, because we're, we're setting this up for flash on clash. So I think we're ready to get going. Okay, when choosing your, uh, your LED and whether you want to wire it in parallel or series, there's a number of things to consider. So I'm going to go over them really quickly. Uh, first thing here, you've got a, a LED engine LED, which we'll be getting to in a minute, and a, uh, uh, this is a tri cree LED. Now the tri cree LED is easier to wire up, the pads aren't as close together as the uh, as the the LED engine, but the LED engine has four dies. This only has three. Now you can also get a quad Cree or quad Rebel. That um, would probably be the, the the best choice if you can find the right optic. You need to choose the right optic so that you can you know get an even blade. Um, won't go into that in detail in this video. But one of the nice uh, features of, of this LED is uh, you've got RGB. You can mix them. Um, but if you want to run a single die for flash on clash, like you can with this old Petite Crouton 1.6 and the power extender, um, you, you're probably going to be using a 7.4 volt lithium ion battery. Your single die can handle maybe a max of 4 volts. You'll have to look that up. So to drop from 7.6 or 7.4 volts down to your 4 that you're running through your power extender, for your flash on clash, you're going to need a big beefy resistor like that. It takes up a lot of space in your in your hilt. Now, if you're using instead a lead engine, you can link the the dies you're using for flash on clash. In this case, it would be the the two greens G and G. If I link those dies in series, like I'll show you in a moment, I don't have to use a big resistor because in series they run at seven volts or more, probably closer to seven and a half or eight. So I might even be able to skip the resistor altogether because the max voltage my battery will be putting out is 8. Or I could get a little 1 ohm resistor. This isn't a 1 ohm resistor. Um, but for all intents and purposes, it's a 2 watt resistor. I bend the, the wires really close. And on your power power extender, where, the, where an SMD resistor might go, if you don't have an SMD resistor, you can run those, run those leads right through your power extender, snip them off at the back and solder them and you can use just a little 1 ohm um, 2 watt resistor in order to to get the, the right voltage for a 2 die flash on clash. So you've got red and blue maybe mixed for your main blade which would be purple green and green mixed in series for your flash on clash which would provide kind of a greenish mostly white flash on clash. It's a really excellent combination with that LED and it's really easy to do with the power extender if you were to try to do it with this one, you would need a beefy resistor. So that's one reason why a quad um, LED might be a better choice. Now here's an example of a, of a power extender that I've already wired up with the proper wires. Of course the yellow goes to my little flash on clash pad. Power, po positive to positive, negative to negative, and then you've got positive and negative to your LED, which is this clip for me. And then I've got it one coat of a, a clear shrink tube wrapped around it so that that can sit in my hilt or be uh, adhered to to something on the inside of the hilt, doesn't go bouncing around, doesn't short circuit on anything. So I'm not going to get into detail about how to wire a power extender in this video. If you need to find the value of your resistor, um, you can look up Ohm's Law or you can cheat. There are a number of LED resistor calculators online that you can Google punch in your voltage, punch in the forward voltage of your LED and your milliamps and it'll spit out the best resistor choice for you. You can order those at the Custom Saver shop or through Mauser or whatever. Okay, this is a Tri-Rebel that I'm going to be wiring up. It's a blue, blue, white 
and I'm going to be wiring the two blue dice uh, in parallel so that I can use it with a common 7.4 volt lithium ion battery and then the white's going to be uh, run on its own. So uh, what I've got here, and I've got it as close as I can to try to show you everything, hopefully you can see it. Um, I've got uh, the two blue and then the white over there. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use this wire. This is from Cat5, which is just an interconnect cable for computers. I've stripped it. Um, it's, a, it's a solid copper wire with plastic shield. And I've found one that I, I like, and here's, here's why. Um, I just snipped the wires off. If I use a little bit of solder, I've got my solder gun fairly hot for this. You can see, I don't know if you could tell, the, when I applied some heat and some solder, the insulation just peeled back on its own. So I don't have to strip a little piece there. What I want to do is I want to go, of course when I'm doing parallel, I want to go the two dice that I'm linking. I want to go positive to positive and negative to negative. So I'm going to position that with my helping hands. And again, my soldering iron is quite hot. And I'm going to link the brown wire and make it the positive. Get a nice joint there. I'm going to uh, put my solder iron away. Check that that's a good joint. With the Cat5, aha, it's not a good joint. This is an excellent example of why we check stuff. So I'm going to line that up and I'm going to do that again. And rather than edit that out of the video to make you think that I'm a pro that gets it right every time, I think it's more important to, to underscore the value of checking things and making sure that your joints are good. Again, that looks like a good joint, but we'll, uh, we'll check it. Yeah, that's a good solid joint. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this brown wire. There's the positive for the one blue. Here's the positive for the second blue. I'm going to run it really close. Snip it off right there. Press it so it's nice and close to the pad that I'm looking at. Now again, I'm going to do this little trick where I apply a little bit of solder and it peels back the insulation. I'm going to press it down and make sure I'm making good contact. Again, my, my soldering iron is quite hot for this. There's a little movement when I released it, but I'm going to take a small watch, watch maker screwdriver and I'm going to just press that and make sure that that's a good connection. So there, I've linked the positive and the positive on these two dice. So I'm going to do the same thing uh, with the negative and then we'll uh, continue from there. Okay, I've got, uh, as you can see, a little Cat5 bridging the uh, positive to positive of the two white dice and the negative to the negative of the two white dice, and you can see the positive and the negative of the, uh, sorry, of the white die is open. So the blues are linked in parallel, and the white is open. So what I'm going to do is I've got our, my red and black wires here, and I'm just going to pre-tin so that they're ready to go. Again, my soldering iron is quite hot, and I'm going to take the uh, the positive. Now I could I could put this red wire on either end of this brown. Cat 5, wherever it fits, just because they're linked, remember? I'm going to make sure that that solder joint is nice. Again, I want to check it. Okay, so I've got my positive, so that now my positive on both blue dice are linked. And now I'm going to do my negative. Might as well do right beside the spot that I just soldered. Get that lined up. Okay, so now I've got, well, we'll check it. We've learned that you need to check it every time. Check that it's a good joint. Okay, so now I've got uh, my red to uh, uh, red to positive, black to negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just strip these, the ends of these, really quickly. Here's what I like to do. Oops, and you can just use a, a regular battery for this. Um, now, I just use any old thing. In, in this case, I'm going to use two AAAs for three volts. So when I apply 3 volts to these wires, black is my negative, red is my positive, I should get both blue dice lighting up. And there we go. So now I know I've successfully linked the two blue dice in parallel. Um, so all that remains is, uh, whenever I do a system like this, where I've got red and black as my main blade color, and then I use purple and blue, or sorry, purple and, uh, and yellow, for my, my white, so I'm going to solder those on and then uh, check it, and then we'll have this LED complete. Now, as you can see, I've got uh, my yellow and purple wires connected for the white, which will be my flash on clash. And I'm just going to test that again with my, my little 3 volt battery system. Uh, purple is my negative, 
yellow. Yeah, and then I've got a nice bright white. That's my flash on clash. So you can do whatever wiring color coding you, you like. Um, I've done a lot of these sabers, and so I just generally try to do the same every time. Um, and that's uh, yellow is the positive, and purple is the negative to the flash on clash die. And then red is the positive, and black is the negative to the main. So I'm going to attach that now to my heatsink, and I've got a, uh, a parallel wired tri Cree for flash on clash. Okay, this is a lead engine, RGGB, which means red, green, green, blue. Now I've, I've done the technique where I showed you earlier with my little uh, three volt battery pack and I've tested these. You can tell I've already wired some things and played with this. So I'm gonna show you, I'm um, gonna use this as a tester example. I've already tested these two pads and I know that they're one of the green dice. These two pads are also one of the green dice, so I've labeled the positive with green. These two are the red, positive and negative, and these two are the blue, positive and negative. So I use a Sharpie and I color code them as I'm going around before I wire them so I don't have to rewire them. But um, this is a good joint that I've done previously, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, because these pads are really close together, what happens if you accidentally bridge them with your solder and now they're linked, or there's a short circuit. Um, if you have a magnifying glass, sometimes you'll be able to see a lot more clearly, or a fine point soldering iron. But I'm just going to use the uh, standard point on the soldering iron, I'm rubbing it on the brass to make it nice and clean. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that these two are linked, and I'm going to use uh, this technique, which is uh, just you can use a, a, a copper weave, or in this case, this is just a copper wire, um, speaker wire, or whatever. It's got a nice fine copper to it, nice and clean. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread that out, and I've got my soldering iron really hot. I've got a little bit of solder, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck my solder here so I have access to it, nice and close. Actually, I don't want to break my rule. I don't want to solder, touch solder over a component, because solder can drop onto the component and short circuit something. So I'm just going to leave this over here so that I can touch a little bit of it to get the soldering iron primed and tinned and ready to go. And then I'm just going to lay it across both joints and it heats up the copper and in turn heats up the solder underneath and what you want is you want to you want to soak the solder in its liquid form into the braid and as you can tell I'm applying a lot of heat here and this is a lead engine which is a very heat efficient um, LED the pads directly link to the heat sink underneath so it takes a while to get it warmed up but as you can see I'm already able to soak off a lot of the solder and now those are those aren't uh, those aren't linked anymore. Um, so I can double check that with a meter just to, to make sure, but I can already see by looking at it that those are no longer linked to those pads. Um, so what I want to do is uh, I want to show you what I've done with this LED. First of all, I'm going to make sure that this joint is still good because I'm going to I'm going to use this a little later. Yeah, it's a good joint. So if you can see here, this is a positive pad of the red LED. This is the negative pad of the red LED. This is the positive, uh, let me check, yes, this is the positive pad of the blue LED and the negative pad of the blue LED. If I was to have wired them in parallel, the positives are linked, the negatives are linked. If you think of it like your garden hose, you put a splitter on your hose and equal water goes to two things, a lawn sprinkler and a nozzle, or whatever. Um, when you hook up in series, it I think of it like a flow of water. You're hooking up one item before the other. So what you want, what we're going to do, is we're going to hook up the positive to the positive of the red, and we're imagining the flow of electricity going into the red die and coming out of the red die through the negative pad and going from the negative pad into the positive pad of the blue die through the blue die and out through the negative. So it's almost like we have one LED with the positive here and the negative here. And that's going to combine in series our red and our blue, and they're going to give us purple. So I'm going to get out some wire, I'm going to wire that up, and then we're going to go from there. Okay, I'm ready to go. <clears throat> Excuse me, ready to go here. I've got uh, my helping hands just outside of the picture. And I've got the red going to the red, or the positive on the red die. Going to, again, with lead engines, different than uh, different than uh, tri rebels and tri crease you really need a lot of heat in order to get these pads to work and you want to get a good solder joint on there and not a 
a poor joint and even with a good soldering iron like this one they don't always look the best when you're done but uh, you want to get it take your time and get it done properly so if you're not experienced with this lead engine may not be the best choice for you now that there are quad rebels and quad um, tr uh, crees and things like that I've pre-tinned the tips of these just a moment ago so these are nice and ready to go this one's a lot of a it's a smaller pad so I want to take my time and make sure I get that one right the angle that your soldering iron is at is sometimes critical you melt a little bit of the, the wire shielding there but that's okay I'm gonna want to run this wire over to this hole so I think we're ready to plug uh, plug that in and test it out okay this is the LED that we just wired up and this in the background is my bench power supply which you probably don't have but it's a really great tool uh, for a number of things and one of the things is going to be for for doing some testing with LEDs and this is a, of course a lead, uh, lead engine RGGB and I've looked up the specifications so I know that the the red die uh, requires a voltage of between 2 and 2.96 volts and I know that the blue die requires a voltage of between 3.2 and 4.48 is the maximum that's listed for these two. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to see, we're going to test the theory that if you wire the two dies in series, you need to add the voltage. Now we don't want to run more than 1,000 milliamps or one amp into these because unlike wiring them in parallel, you could run it at two amps because you know that one amp is going to go to each die. Well, in this case, the voltage goes up, but the, the current uh, isn't shared the same way. So we, we don't want to exceed the maximum of 1 amp or 1,000 milliamps for this whole circuit. So that's where, where this comes in. I'm going to gradually bump up. This one is the voltage, and then I'm going to gradually bump up the amps. And you see the LED starts to come on. You see that purple color, and you watch the numbers. We're already up to 4.8 volts, but our amps are really low. So we're going to go higher. Okay, now we're at 6 volts and we're only at half an amp, 0.46. I'm going to go higher. I need to go on this one. Okay, we're getting up to 0.73 of an amp, 0.84 of an amp. We're getting, okay, 0.9 of an amp. So that's 900 milliamps and we're at 7 volts, which really is like adding the voltages of the two LEDs. So you get that bright, nice purple and you don't need to run it higher than, there it's 1 amp. You notice it isn't, it isn't any brighter, and it's still at 7 volts. So 7 volts. Now, if you're, if you're running a crystal focus or a petite crouton, which is ideal for this kind of thing, uh, the card is going to calculate the voltage automatically. You only need to worry about setting the milliamps. Um, so in a setting like this, you'd want to use 1,000 milliamps to this series circuit of R and B for purple. So there you have it. That's how to wire up a, a multi-die LED, whether it's a Tri-Cree, a Tri-Rebel, or a LED engine. Um, of course, there's still some things to learn. This is a, it's kind of a large thing, and as new, new LEDs come out like the, the quads, um, there are new things to learn, new possibilities. Uh, but at least this will get you started uh, to learn what the specifications you need for your LED are, how to wire it up so that it works with both your main blade color and your flash-on-clash color. Um, so until next time, thanks for watching.